So I'd like to talk about an initial power on for a Gottlieb System 1. When I get a new Gottlieb game, and I don't really know where it's been or what it's been through, I like to kind of power it up in a systematic way. This way, if there's a bad power supply or a burned up coil under the play field, um, I can kind of identify those things before it causes any catastrophic damage to the rest of the system. It's just kind of a nice way to turn the game on and to know that your game is going to be in good condition uh, when you turn it on for the first time. And it'll help you f repair and fix the game too because you'll find problems kind of along the chain and then fix them accordingly. So. For this exercise, I'm going to be using my homemade Gottlieb test fixture board here. It's basically a game mounted on a 4 foot by 2 foot plywood sheet. It's a little easier to film under this circumstance than inside a game. That's why I'm using it. It basically is a game though. It looks like a game. It's laid out like a game. It's just slightly compressed. So the first place that I start is on the bottom board of the game. So this is the bottom board right here with the two transformers, a bank of five fuses, a couple bridge rectifiers, your service outlet, grounding plane, some diodes here for the coin door, and an EMI filter, uh, which is line filter noise. So with the game unplugged and off, the first thing I like to do is check the fuses. So in order to check the fuses, I always remove them from the fuse holders. Um, I'm just using a screwdriver, I'm just prying them up. And again, game powder up, powered off so you don't shock anything. Then I set my meter, a DMM, or digital multimeter, to continuity so I get a tone when I put the two leads together. And I should be able to tone out all the fuses. A bad fuse will give me no tone or zero or no continuity. Okay, so I check all those, those are all good. Now the next thing I do while I got them out too is check the fuses, make sure that they are the correct type and value compared to what it says on this little chart. There's also a fuse back here. This is the primary 120 volt fuse. You can take that out and check that one too if you want. Another thing I like to do is check the fuse clips. Make sure that they have good tension, that they're not corroded, that when the fuses go in, they snap in nicely and tight and that there's no evidence of burn or any damage to the fuse clips. Now that I've got the fuses checked, next thing I do is I check the bridge rectifiers to make sure that they're good. I set my meter, um, my digital multimeter, to the diode test. Okay, And then what I do is I find the ground leads. The ground leads are real easy to find on the bridge rectifiers because they're the green wires. You can tell green here on the ground plane, green wires on the bridge. So I take my red, dot, or my red DMM lead put it on the ground, which kind of seems opposite of what you would expect, and then take the black lead and put it on the two lugs right next to it. And I should get 0.4 to 0.6 volts, which I am getting. And do that for both sides over here. Again, working out pretty good. If you have a shorter bridge, it'll show right away. Then I go to the positive lead and I put my black DMM lead, which is diagonal to the to the ground right here and then I can check the lugs the same lugs again and again make sure that they're 0.4 to 0.6 volts which these are so from the way it appears my bottom panel is good so now we can move on to the power supply so now we're on to the power supply um, the first thing I did now is I did ground modifications to this. I replaced the filter cap with a new one and then ran a, a negative wire from here to the to the frame on the power supply. I really suggest you do that before you even turn the game on. Um, and then what I do is I remove the top connector. This goes to the CPU board. I remove the side connector. That goes to the score displays. So the only connector I have left is this one right here, the bottom connector. And it is basically the input voltages coming from the bottom board which we just tested. Now note that you can mount this connector wrong. It says this side up. Okay, so this side goes north. Also, there's a couple little pins here so I can't shift the thing right or left. 
Um, not all of them have these little Molex pins in here to prevent me from misplugging it. So just make sure when you put this connector on, because you will have this connector off when you disassemble the game uh, to move it, that you put it on correctly. Don't put it on upside down. So now we can check for the power coming out of the power supply. So we have our bottom connector on, we've got the power on, we can take our, we got our digital multimeter on, I've got it set to DC voltage. Take your black lead, put it on ground, which will be either right here on this big large cap, or if you've done the ground modifications, right on the metal chassis. Okay, and then we can come up to the top connector and check for 5 volts. And you can see we've got nice 5 volts on these two leftmost pins. The middle pin is ground, and then the, and then the rightmost pin is minus 12 volts. So we can see that this power supply is putting out proper voltage, 5 volts, and minus 12 volts as far as the CPU is concerned. Now we have to go to this side connector over here and check the 60 and 42 volts. The ground on this is a different ground. So I'm going to put my black lead on this lead of this capacitor right here and then my red lead up here on the top and I should get, there's my 60 volts, 62 volts, that's fine, and then right here is my 42 volts and there's my 42 volts. So they're a little high but they're good. Um, and actually you can adjust it with this pot. The next thing you can do is check for the reference voltages on the displays which is going to be plus 4 volts and plus 8. So again now I got to switch from this ground over to the metal chassis ground and I can check reference voltages. So here's my 4 volts. It's a little low but that's okay. 3.6 will work fine. And then here's my 8 volts, 7.8 volts. That's fine too. So now what this tells me is the power supply is good. It's putting out all the voltages it needs to put out. If it was putting out the wrong voltages, it would be good to know now because I can go ahead and repair the power supply. But it's not. It's got good voltage. So now we can take the next step. Before we proceed with any further testing, I like to remove the solenoid fuse from the bottom panel just so that no coils can lock on or no damage can occur due to having 25 volts running through the game. Okay, so now we can put all the power supply connectors on because we know the power supply is good. And we can move on to the CPU board. So here's the main power coming into the CPU board. This is supplying plus 5 and minus 12 ground. The CPU board powered on and all the other connectors removed. We can just check to see if the board is loading the 5 volts correctly. And we can see here that the board, CPU board is connected and we have 5.08 volts. So the CPU board is not dragging the power supply down. And then we can check the minus 12 here and see that we've got minus 12.08. So the two voltages are good with the CPU board connected. So now that the 5 volts and minus 12 volts is checked out, we can turn the game off and add the two connectors right here for the score displays to the side of the CPU board. I will also disconnect all the score displays. So you can see here I've got all the displays disconnected, including the status display, and I just leave one display on. It doesn't really matter which one, but just leave one display connected and then all the connectors across the bottom of the CPU board removed. And now we can power up and see if the score displays act properly. So now I can turn the game on. One, two, three, four, five. And if the CPU board's working, you can see the display come on. So now, I can see that I've got a display that works and the CPU is booting. So I'm going to turn the game off and I'm going to connect the next display. Power back on. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now I can see i got a second display. And I'm going to rinse and repeat until i got all the four displays working, including the little credit display. Before we do the next step, I want you to lift the playfield and look at all the coils. Give them a physical examination. Here's a pair of coils. This is pretty much what they should look like. This is one that's been heat stressed. So anything that looks funky like this, you need to check the ohmage on it. 
okay? If it's a dead short, which would be what I would call less than one ohm, you got a problem. Okay, so this one's 2.5, so even though it's been heat stressed, it's probably okay. But basically, you want to make sure that there's no coils that have low ohmage. And you don't have to disconnect them or remove them from the game to do this. You can do it just each one with the power off, your uh, digital multimeter set to low ohms, and check the ohm readings on all the coils. Now it's time to put the solenoid fuse back in the bottom panel and do some further testing. Turn the power on for the first time with the driver board connected. I like to have all these connectors on the bottom of the driver board off. And then if everything comes on okay, we can add them back one at a time. Like this one here, we'll do the chimes. This one here, we'll do the uh, CPU controlled lamps. This one here, we'll do the other playfield coils. And this one here, we'll do some more playfield lamps. Okay, so with the power off, I connect up the driver board connector. Now I'm going to turn the game on. We're going to see what happens. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and I heard the two under playfield relays click. The, uh, the tilt and the game over. Nothing else locked on. So it appears that my driver board's good. So now that the driver board all checks out with the solenoid fuse connected, I like to, and the game on, I like to just check each one of the switch matrix lines on these two bottom CPU board connectors just to see if there's voltage on them. I want to make sure that there's um, no 25 volt coil voltage on any one of the pins, you know, because maybe a, a coil voltage is somehow shorting to the switch matrix and then if you hook these guys up to the CPU board, it'll blow out the circuitry for the switch matrix on that board and obviously we don't want to do that. So that's a good thing to check these before you hook them up. That's kind of the last step in this whole process. Now I can actually coin the game up. Coin it again. And then I can actually try and start a game. And we are playing our game. So, to, to summarize, I've taken this a step at a time. I've gone through and made sure that everything worked a step at a time. Anything in the powertrain didn't work, I repaired that broken device before hooking up anything else. Great way to do System 1 and System 80 games is to just bring them up a piece at a time.